I believe that probably most people that watch watch the stream are procrastinating at work or something similar. That's what I would be doing. I am a, I am a horrible employee. Hello, Leon, or Leo. I'm just using some live cutters here. If you guys are familiar with Blender, then this is old news. But for me, when I when I first started um, using Blender, this was kind of like voodoo magic because usually for a three D program, you have to when you do booleans, you kind of lose some flexibility, but but this way, we can still to kind of keep designing even after. It just lets you be more indecisive, which is probably not a good thing. <laughs> Already indecisive enough. I see that. So yeah, we were working on this um, earlier this week, and um, just been continuing on it. There's not not really any special techniques being used here. It's all just very simple uh, bunch of booleans everywhere it's pretty cool how how much you can do with just the same uh, basic tools if you just keep you know layering them and use them in different ways and yeah yeah blender burst I'm using a tablet I, I use a tablet for all of my modeling because uh, it's I think it's more ergonomic than a mouse and it less less strain. So yeah I have uh, my whole setup is sort of based on using a tablet. Yeah, it's, it's a bit weird at first, but um, yeah, the first time I saw it, um, it was actually my roommate was using Maya with a mouse, and I, I thought he was crazy, but it's actually pretty nice.
So yeah, um, I guess uh, if you guys weren't here yesterday, uh, we had uh, Darren Quatch came over to to draw and hang out, and you you should definitely check out that video if you if you weren't here, because yeah, Darren has a lot of good experience and tips and stuff, and he has been doing this uh, entertainment stuff for a long time and uh, yeah it's a it's a great little stream and I hope he'll do uh, gum roads later at some point because everybody wanted him to do it <laughs> So a lot of these shapes here, I guess, are just, um, I think I was thinking about can openers for some of these, especially this one here. And uh, we were doing bone studies earlier of skulls and animal skulls, and there's a lot of these, these kind of shapes where they sort of curl, curl in on themselves. Let me see if I can find an example. <laughs> uh, yeah, just these negative negative spaces here where the there's these uh, interesting looking holes and sort of hooks that come around all the way. Like C shapes, I guess you could call it. And then W shapes and a lot of scoops and scallops. So that, that kind of stuff really inspires me. I, I love that aesthetic, so I'm trying to get that in here. And I'm, I'm pretty um, impressed with the performance so far, like uh, even with all these, there's a lot of um, booleans happening here, all these little boxes here are all live booleans but it's still it's still running pretty smoothly I don't see any it's not getting too slow yet Yeah, Darren, he, yeah, he did sound pretty against uh, Gumroad, or I guess, uh, I'm still not sure why, though. I'm trying to convince him. I, ho I hope he'll come around at some point. He, he was saying he would rather do... Um, like a mentorship or face-to-face -face kind of classes or maybe some kind of thing like that. I don't know, maybe he just wants it to be more personal. I'm not sure. We gotta, we gotta keep bugging him to do it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think that would be fun. So this stage of the model kind of feels like just noodling here because I feel like it's already sort of figured out and now we're just sort of having fun with it messing around this is probably the least the less stressful part of it um, the beginning is always the most stressful because <laughs> you don't know what what's happening I feel like this is sort of getting there oh yeah we have all these stickers from uh, John McInnes biggest problem with this stuff is self-motivation yeah man that's that's everybody's problem <laughs> oh man hey Jesse um. uh, Darren he he does some 3d but he's um he's actually taking uh my blender class right now at uh so i think he's trying to get more into 3d he he used to use maya a lot too um but he's switching he's he's trying to learn blender right now so that pretty excited because he has so much uh he has so much stuff in his sketchbooks that that's like ready to go that he wants to model so I hope that like once he gets comfortable with it, he's gonna just go just uh you know, do all of those things. Check says, Can you demonstrate rendering? Can we just drag and drop? Uh, yeah, you can say, like, you want to make a material here for just this section. You can go Shift V, copy material, and then you can change the color here and do whatever you want to do in here, make it metal. You can make it rough. Let's say we add in a stripe here. You can make a new slot and apply it to that same metal. Oh wait, no, that's not it. What material is this? Call it blue, metal, or metal, blue. Okay, and then over here, just do the same thing. Switch this from metal to metal blue. And that's it. 
Um, Tony, yeah, this is 2.8 right here. By the way, guys, you, if you're ever watching somebody uh, Blender video, you can always see the version right here on the bottom. Or it might be on the top. I think it used to be on the top. But anyway, you look for look on the screen and you, you'll probably see the version. Somewhere. Um, I'm just trying to create a ring around this. Um <laughs> so if I combine this with this. Hey Nino. Um, Victor says, has Darren considered Udemy? Um, I don't know, Udemy seems kind of shady. It looks like they kind of, it seems like they, I don't know. Crimson Knight says he's taken quite a few courses from Udemy and that they're very well structured. Hmm, okay. It seems like they they do random sales though and they don't really tell the teachers or the teachers have no control over how they do it. They just kind of steamroll them. I'm not sure. I'm definitely psyched about Blender Conference. Yeah, all the Blender stuff has been so fun to watch lately. It's like my favorite 
My new favorite TV show. The Blender Show. too much. Call this one rails and try try out some different colors here. Oh shoot, where did these ones go? Here's what I have to do now. Let's save this as a new one. And open up the old one. Grab this stuff. You can go control C to copy it. And open up the, this other one. Control V. these ones into this one. Control J. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Blender today. I mean, yeah, I hope maybe they're just super busy. Have you guys seen any news on like what's going on with the Blender today? Substance painter or paint texture with blender? I don't know. I've never used sub substance painter. Um, most of the time we have to shade smooth manually. Can't it have it automatically? Yeah, that, that would be good. I feel like blender should have uh, like a edge threshold automatically. That would kind of be good like this this is what shade smooth does it says auto smooth and shade angle right here 
but for some reason this is not on by default in Blender. Uh, I don't think you can use sub D with so many planes. Well, this is sub D right here. Um, oops. What am I doing? This piece is sub D, so we can move it around. And it also has booleans in it. So you can mix and match sub D and booleans if you want. Like we could go here. And then we'd have to get our booleans and make them come out all the way. That's kind of neat, actually. So yes, you can you can mix and match. If we combine these into one It'll show up as two uh, handles right there. Maybe we can go from here to here. Control X to combine it. I think that's better. Pablo streaming on Monday. Nice. It's good to hear. Um, and then what else? Crimson says I have substance. I've used substance painter, and I don't like the idea of having to pay a monthly sub. Same reason I used GIMP instead of PS. Oh, I didn't know Substance Painter was a monthly thing. Which using you solid mode or rendered mode because I see reflections? This is the VizDev mode here. Um, or LookDev mode. It's for 2.8. But this is how it looks in solid mode. Actually, I. I really like this new matte cap, uh, the orange one. I think that's it's my new favorite matte cap. And I like the new matte cap stuff where you can um, you could make them random color like that, or you could do you could change the background. And this stuff is cool too. What is that? Ooh.
kind of cool. Fake technical. My favorite. We gotta have a zebra. The zebra's kind of funky though. I don't know if it's actually. Yeah, it works, I guess. It works better on subdivide subdivided stuff. Here's the classic, the classic ones. I love madcaps. They just, they're so punchy and juicy. And the little outline makes it look more technical, I guess. Mr. Q, you've been hiding in here this whole time? Oh, it's okay. You can stay there, Mr. Q. I won't tell anybody. This you could. That's weird. I think that's the sampling here. Oh. Oh wow. Cool. Look, super, super flat. Hmm. Hmm, I don't know about the ridges though. 
I think I like it better without it. Oh man. That's crazy. Oh, that's that's making some really nice little shadows in there. Attenuation. Is that like the fall off here? Hmm. Cool. All right. Maybe I'll try. Let's try modeling with this. Do you guys know if you can apply different mat caps to different? materials like if I wanted to have this be the orange mat cap and this is the red mat cap and this is the, something like that Tony yes the booleans are non-destructive here so let me show you what we got here all of this stuff is non-destructive We can cut through our whole ship just like that. Why is this thing so wide? And then, like, even these huge cuts down here are all non destructive. But I want to show the guts. But you know, this this might be cool to just... Okay, I'm going to save this here. Let me try to switch this. Um, hmm. There we go. So now we have a cut line here. Oops. Oops. What did I do? Cut line. Let's make it really thin. And then apply it. Oh, we gotta do it after the subdivision. Damn it. So if I if I wanted to have a cut line and apply all of that then we'd have to go to the original object and apply everything oh, crap. so that's why I saved it first oops apply and then now this ooh, what is that it's not very nice well Ideally it would work, but I think I might have screwed something up. Yeah, it is really fast. It's pretty crazy. And this is subdivided here. So we, we could grab this piece and just go like that. very very flexible you could say that's don't want that to be so strong there make it soft this one too make this this one soft Oh, man. 
I don't know if I should do this version instead. So that's pretty cool that we can adjust stuff so easily and then just makes you more um, explore more I think at least I feel more I feel safer to make uh, big design changes here Thank you, so 60 the pen. That is a um, very creepy uh, little icon. <laughs> yeah, thanks to you guys yesterday who um, donated on. Um, the stream with Darren so we didn't have to eat Lunchables yesterday we actually went and got some uh, Chinese food uh, shrimp that Darren was craving so thank you guys you paid for our delicious shrimp um, Victor, was there anything you missed in Max? I've never used anything other than Blender, so I don't have any perspective. Well, I barely ever used Max. Um, I, I mostly used Moto, and there there are some things I miss in Moto. It's mainly the UI. The UI in Moto is, um, I guess it's a strong part, strong suit. A lot of stuff in Moto is context sensitive, so that means like depending on what mode you're in or what what selection mode you're in, what what type of object you have selected, it the tools will kind of adjust according to what you're doing, which was really cool. Um, so actually, I've been trying to sort of bring some of that context sensitive stuff into Blender with these scripts that I'm using. But yeah. Now I don't know if if I should um, go back to the this version here. Maybe this version is better. Sorry guys, I'm still sort of figuring this out, so I'm might be making you sick here, going back and forth with choices, but. I guess that's what we get for... Why is it doing that? I wonder. What is going on there? So mirror first, then the subdivide. But then what's this orange? Is that the solidify? I think it's the solidify, maybe. So the mirror needs to be on the top. I wish there was a way to like send it all the way to the top with one click. I 
So why is one one side clear and the other side is Is this a bug or is it supposed to be like this? So then when I subdivide it, it shows up, but then half of it is not visible for some reason. So annoying. I can't wait until they do the drag and drop. Um, let's see. Victor says, I think you need to set your mat cap to texture instead of color. Hey Julian, thanks. Thanks for the kind words. Um, I don't understand. Set the matte cap to texture. I actually like the way that it looks here. But do you mean like just changing this to the different render modes? Because I like... This looks nice too. I... Hmm. I like this really flat. I think this is nice for modeling because then you get a nice uh, view of what the shapes are doing exactly. I made a couple faces on the inside of the mesh, which is really confusing right now, but I need to get rid of those. It's hard to pick them. Damn it. It's this one right here. There it is. So I wonder if I should just skip this whole front. Um, this whole piece right here, if I hide that. This face up here is kind of a mess, right? So, what happens if we delete?
There we go. So we made a little a little loop there. Hmm. Oh, I had it. it was like it was inside out here. Whenever I I'm like really confused by what what's going on, I need to usually have to turn off <coughs> turn off stuff to troubleshoot a little bit. getting rid of the mirror. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna change this script here because I don't want it to actually delete the mirror whenever I toggle it. So, I, so if there is a mirror, I want it to just turn off the X. Or just turn off all of them, I guess. Hmm. I mean, like, sometimes the modifiers won't show for me if the color of the matte cap is not set to material. The color of the matte cap? Oh, I see what you mean. So it only works in material mode. But uh, I think the modifiers are working okay. It's just, it's my fault. I need to adjust, adjust this script a little bit. There's morning guts. Uh... Donate, yeah. Appreciate anything if you guys want to donate, but anyway, just hanging out is cool. Otherwise, what did I kill it again? Ah. And Gumroad not available in my country. Dang it, that is not good. Node based modifiers. I think they are they are planning on that. There's um there's already that like uh, node animation nodes. And I feel like if, if they can do it for animation it should be easier to do it um without time. Let me see. So you can use nodes to do stuff like 
uh, this kind of fall offs and moving stuff around like like that. I haven't played with this yet, but it looks it looks pretty powerful. It's kind of like a, um, Cinema 4D type of thing. What was it called? Zver Chalk or something like that. Blender's Zverchuk. Has anybody used this stuff yet? Oh. So you can looks like they're generating geometry with no, with this node and using a curve and oh it's not a video anyway let's see what we got here What the hell? <clears throat> so this looks like... Wait, what is going on here? Invoke. So this is some programming stuff going on. There's a script there. Here's his script. It's got all kinds of calculus shit going on. So what does it do? You know, put some points on the glow, maybe. I saw a Pikachu in the thumbnail. I want to see Pikachu. There we go. Hmm. So the Pikachus are coming, probably. Am I downloading? Yes. I am downloading new scripts every day. Um, actually, it's been getting a little bit more stable, so I, I haven't um, updated my scripts that much. I mean, I've, I've updated them, but I'm adding features. I'm not, like, fixing bugs. So it's becoming a little bit more stable so far. We'll see. There, it's only a matter of time before something breaks again. But... Um, This is, I would like to ask when I transfer the rig and animation with Maya to Blender, the rig becomes corrupted. Um, that's probably going to happen. I don't, I don't know if there's a way to transfer rigs. You can probably transfer out baked animation, but it's a lot to ask for a program to like accept a rig from somebody else. That's usually doesn't work. But who knows? Maybe there's a way. Does anybody know if there's a way to? Uh, to do to transfer rigs from Maya. I do know that Alembic works for transferring um what you would call it. You can use Alembic to transfer baked animations from any program into Blender, including Maya. Uh what was I doing? Oh yeah, where's my scripting? Alright, so I want to work on my mirror menu here. So I'm going to open up my mirror menu. Where is it? Where is it? Sorry guys, one second. I'm going to find my pie symmetry. The problem is, 
when I toggle the mirror off, it actually deletes the mirror when really I just wanted to turn the mirror off and not delete it. So if I go Shift X Live Mirror, it deletes the mirror. That's not good. Um, especially when we have lots of uh, booleans and stuff going on and the order gets complicated. I don't want to have to deal with it. So I'm going to test this out with a simple subtract here. So we have a subtract going, and we have the mirror going. And so now, let me copy all this crap here. Okay, so mirror toggle, what does it say? So mirror toggle says, basically, in your mirror, <coughs> in your objects modifiers, if the type is mirror, then remove the one that's named mirror base. So I don't want to do that. I want to actually edit the mirror base. So let's see if Okay. So this one says if 0 So if there is more than 0 mirrors then remove the mirror. So that's not what I want. What I want is if there is more than zero mirrors, which means if, if a mirror exists, then we want to change this one setting of the mirror. So let me go in here. <clears throat> Maybe I could do this, show in my edit mode, show in, copy that. Oops. Come on, it doesn't let me copy. Damn it. All right, so now we just have to uh, type it in. Mirror is dot show in edit mode. Show in edit mode. And then the other one is show viewport. The other one is show render. Show viewport and the last one is show <clears throat> um, okay so that should that means if we if we if we see a mirror if, when we run the script and we see if the mirror does exist then hide it. So let's. So this is actually the other one that we want. Okay. So this is the first one we want. If there is no mirror. So in this case we say if there is no mirror, which means if the length of the number of mirrors is zero, then we want to create a mirror named mirror base. If the number is one or more, then we want to, so if a mirror does exist, then we want to make it hidden. And finally, if if a mirror does exist and it's already hidden, so let's say, okay, da 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 da. So this means if a mirror, mirror already exists, what is this one? Show one cage. Might as well turn that on. I don't know what that does. Uh, no, I forgot about that one. Okay, so now we need to check if 
Blah, 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 blah. Where is it? Here we go. We can do this kind of a check. If the mirror base dot show viewport viewport equals false, then or wait if it's true, then make it false and all these other ones also false. If and then the opposite. Otherwise, or we, we can say else which means otherwise do this other crap here okay <laughs> so let's just run through it again in our in the, your head just for so for the o objects for o in the objects that we have selected the active object is o and if the length of modifier is in O, wait, why do we have the object? Oh, we're creating a new. The length of modifiers is zero, then create a new mirror. If the length is one, then check if the show viewport is true. If it is true, make all everything false and otherwise make it all true. Okay, so let's see if this works. I'm gonna go Alt P, grab this thing, Shift X, Light Mirror. There it is, yes, worked. That never happens. Okay, so now if we do another Boolean here, I'm gonna go Live Subtract here, Light Mirror, there we go. So now it'll keep our position order. So we could move this down, make it happen after. There we go. And, it, and then we, oops. Go mirror. Nice. Okay. That's a lot better. Let me save this here. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. Goes in our symmetry pie. And there it is. So now if I go on my big guy right here, now I don't lose my mirror every time. Okay, good. Now it works with subsurf and with the mirror. And this one. Solidify, I don't have that on a key, but oh well. Let's see. How different is scripting in 2.8 than 2.79? It's, it's pretty much the same. I don't think. There's just some small differences so far, but. The way it works is all the same. I believe FBX can export bones. That's cool. And all the guts reminds me of Japanese mod modeler. Okay, let's check that out. Ooh. Cool. It's, this is a little Geigery. Oh. Yummy guts. What is that? That's not a real Gundam, is it?
Wow. Yeah, it is three of tets. What is that? It looks like a. If Geiger designed a bagpipe. Oh. oh man, that's really cool. I love these, um. Yeah, those, um. What do you call it? Bottle opener shapes. Cool. All right. Kind of dramatic lighting is cool for the. For the run. This always reminds me of like uh, Star Trek or Battlestar Galactica. Whenever they have the the lights going up like that. I wonder if the light would come through the through the windows. Oh yeah. Pretty neat. Hmm. I'm gonna abuse this fog as long as I can.
Where's our light probe? Where are you? There you are. I'm not sure if this will help at all, because I, I don't think there's that much bounce light going on, but we shall try. thinking real hard hmm it's the lights kind of bleeding through here a lot actually Ooh. Let's see this. sometimes if the these light probes are intersecting with the object it kind of goes crazy like that Hey, hmm. Maybe we need more balls. Extra balls, please. Thank you. Today. Yeah, you can see the, the light probes kind of intersecting with the ge geometry there. Mm. Well, these are good in some cases, but I, I guess it's not really useful for, for this. Let's get rid of that. Where are these spotlights coming from? I have no idea. I have no clue. <laughs> no, I'm saving. I'm saving all the time, actually. <laughs> I'm just so fast, man. You can't even see it. I just gotta save.
Oops. Hi, Axer. Good morning. No, it didn't crash. <laughs> it's supposed to be a spaceship. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. How stable is 2.8? Got broken wrist. Um, it's pretty stable, man. I'm I'm using it uh, exclusively now. I'm, I've uh, retired 2.79, and it works good. It's great. There's tiny little annoying bugs, but. For the most part, it, it all works. Works pretty good. So, can't complain for a alpha release. Yeah, it does look very. Uh, it's sci-fi, abstract, long thing. <laughs> Could be anything. But I think the Nero, Neodos, the the benefits uh, definitely outweigh the the cons. So um, yeah, I'm I'm teaching a class right now for Blender, and we're using 2.8 because I don't know. It's 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 good enough. I think it's good enough to use. There's no there's nothing catastrophically broken about it. So we're going to use it. And there's all these really cool new features, so might as well take advantage. Still not sure about this area right here.
Oh, nice. Ox Oxer, do you have any tips for teaching 3D? Like, uh, any, like, universal things that would always happen in your classes? And I, I mean, like, one thing that I keep finding is in class, there, there'll be some people who are, I mean, like, a huge range of uh, skill, I guess. So some students just kind of get it right away, and then others are taking, you know, half half the term to get to the same place so it's it's tough to figure out how to get everybody like evenly through the whole process um thanks neodos uh, is there a position pass i don't i don't know I'm waiting. I'm wondering if I should wait for plugins to be ported, though. Yeah, that's a good point. Oxer was doing animation master to teach, and it was a beginner's class. Get that. Love the way EV renders. I could not get it to work that way. I'm sure, it seems everyone has done some configuring to get it to display real time graphics the way I've seen in most videos. Yeah, the defaults aren't exactly uh, you, you have to change a bunch of settings just to get it to work which I wish I wish they were all turned on by default definitely learning the basics and hotkeys of 2.8 anyways in the meantime love your artwork thanks Neodos Neodos um, just an understanding what 3d is do you think 2.8 has sped up or slowed down I think it's definitely sped up stuff. It's it's well it's sped up things because now we can see these booleans in in the edit in edit mode, which we couldn't do before, so just being able to move this around is uh new. Like before you would have to switch into back into object mode and then back into edit mode and kinda go back and forth to be able to see this. So it's good. It's a good. Um, I definitely think it's worth. Uh, I mean, it's you can do work in it. There's there's no issues doing work with it. So I took a historical approach and I taught them the history of animation and the basics first, and then the basics of what 3D is versus 2D. And then the hardest concept was understanding 3D space. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Could put another boolean here and see what happens. Although I'm not, I'm not too hopeful. Isn't this working? Oh, why is this turned off? What?
it was like me understanding programming what the variable or function was. I would let them do a few trial and error things to play with the interface and then do demos. And then the final was to animate the character. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I guess we were doing kind of different. Uh, animation is even harder because then they have to deal with time also. And uh, Neo does says, good way to describe 3D polygon is compared to origami. That That is really smart, actually. Sort of, uh, yeah, especially low poly stuff definitely looks like origami. Boolean look, looks so good. Yeah, Booleans are... This is one of the things that kind of first attracted me to it. This and uh, Cycles render. Because I was looking for GPU renders and I had tried Octane and I wasn't digging Octane. And then uh, somebody said, somebody was like, hey, Blender's free and it has GPU rendering. I said, okay, let's go. And that was it. Cool story, bro. <laughs> oh my god. Hi, Zinok. Zinoj. Still fiddling with this stupid thing after all this time. What am I doing? This corner is killing me. I, I just applied all these booleans to make it a real mesh. I don't know why I did that. I think I'm trying to figure out what to do. Ah, this spot's so awkward. I also don't like that this is almost the same size as that. Kind of wish they were a bit different. Board. Oh my god. Oh, oh all right, Zeno, thank you. Um Dell says did you stop using Linux? Yeah, I stopped. Because of Dropbox. I need a Dropbox one class and I was pushing the community college to create animation program. Nice. Cool. 
Yeah, ZBrush is also kind of fun, <laughs> but weird, 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 weird interface. Yeah. Is it possible to take this into a game engine? Yes, it is. How does the decals, textures, and real-time vertex painting look now? Um, it's, I mean, here, this is decals and textures, kind of. This is a geometry sticker. And, um, yeah, I was starting to place these, but I don't think I should because design is not really figured out yet. But these work pretty good. Um, grab one of these. Oh, these are all upside down. Oops. good. Again, these are from John McInnes. Who, uh, um, bu -bu -bu. You will have to UV and bake some maps if you want to bring textures into the game too. Uh, Zebra has some serious game with various sculpting tools. Well, have you guys tried sculpting in Blender? It's actually pretty nice also. Um, so for example, we could just grab this piece or uh, I don't know. Grab this piece. Let's see if this will crash. Sculpt. And you can Go in here, add some geometry, go like that. So let's say my ship is growing some tumors, maybe it's got some dents in it. And this resolution we can change too. Over here, we're using Dino Topo, which this is a feature that ZBrush just got recently, and Blender actually had it longer, so... Boom! There you go. I got crease. Still get the boolean. Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, indeedy. Let's see if it works over here. This is going to be bad to be really bad. I should have applied the subdivision first. Uh-oh. Thanks, Julian. Um, for invert, you can do Control I. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the, the setup for 2.8 in terms of hotkeys, but for for right now, I have uh, Control I. Let me revert this. 
but yeah, let's um, let's see if we wanted to sculpt. Um, But this is uh, this is going based off your screen resolution. So if you zoom in, you can create finer and finer detail, which is really nice. Actually, you can smooth. I don't know what all that crap is right there. You can grab. This is a lot like Sculptress, actually. See if we make the resolution higher. You can even use the ZBrush Mac cap. Where is it? This one, right? There you go. With constant detail, what does that mean? Right here. So, what does uh, constant detail mean? Does that mean it doesn't matter how close we are to the to the screen? eyedropper mean? Sample the mesh detail on a click point. Interesting. So if I want it to be this resolution. Oh. Cool. The performance is pretty nice too. Pretty fast. We make it really high. Let's try 60 again. Do you guys know anything about these other modes too, like uh, subdivide collapse? And what is that? Made a turd, space turd. Here we go. Here's the bad guy. He looks like a nut sack. And then here's the good guy over here. Why do they always make the aliens look like nut sacks in in the movies? Ooh. 
giant glowing, let's say. Hey Spencer, it's going good, hanging in there, trying to figure out what to do with this thing. Maybe we need a graphic on the side here. I do a graphic, maybe that's made made out of bullions, since we're doing so many bullions anyway. Let this work. Yes, it works. I need to take a graphic design class. Oh, that's a live subtract.
My brain is toast. Oh, guys, so, do you guys go on Twitter ever um, for Blender stuff? Because I, I, I always thought Twitter was stupid and I never went on it until I started using Blender because all the Blender people seem to be on Twitter. Ugh. And I just want to follow them and see all the crazy stuff they're up to. Um, so, let me see. Let me see if I can find. I saw this really cool demo yesterday of somebody doing. Oh shoot! Oh man, lip always with the crazy, crazy. I think that's like 3D and 2D. Dude, I'm so excited that Lip is using Blender now. He's gonna. He's gonna kick ass. Anyway. So, uh, what were we looking for? Uh, what was it? Oh yeah, Yuming has really cool stuff too. He's been in the forums. And he, he's actually a smart guy, you know, like he knows how to do uh, graphics programming and stuff. And draw. Just Pretty awesome. I think he's working on the land PR, which we need to test out here too. Um, what was I looking for? Clouds. It was clouds. Blender clouds. Not Blender cloud, but Blender clouds. Yeah, this guy. Keen Fong. Where is he? Come on, Keen. This I thought was really cool. And I was like, how the what? Okay. Interesting. And then I was looking in the comments to see how how he did it. And they say using shader editor the principle and it's it's just geometry blended uh, joined close together and a lot of displace that's interesting and then is that volumetric no it is just SSS so that is really cool cool idea and then um, Yesterday, I went in there and I was like, okay, we got to try this out. And here it is. So we got the SSS in here, really highly, I uh, just pumped up values on the, on the strength of the subsurface. Can make it more red or more blue. And and then Darren was over here, and he's like, "Put put lightning, put uh, make it a storm cloud." <laughs> and then we, what else was there? Can change the color of the sky, too. But then, my little contribution is that we are using metaballs here instead of. Um, geometry uh, balls so that way we can you know squish stuff together like this oops you know I think it's getting a, a little bit slow here but. delete Metal balls are pretty cool. So we can do this, make big fluffy clouds. And it looks really great with that, that sub subsurface pumped up really high. 
So I'm really glad. So what I do, I just lurk on, on uh, Twitter and I look for clues on how to do stuff. Man, that's really great. Super cheap and easy clouds. I wonder what a cube cloud might look like. Very nice. Man. And then what else do we have? Anyway, this is great stuff. I love Metaballs. I'm going to do a more finished project with Metaballs at some point. So this is with the, the lighting from the uh, irradiance probes, and what about without lighting? Let's see. What happens if we turn it off? Ooh. It's pretty good. Let's do that again. go really dark here. Let's see. Pink lighting. Uh -oh. This is our sun. to um, put a light right in the middle of this thing. How do we see it? Where'd it go? Can we just, if you match, match the color of the the lightning pretty strong no shadow right or do we need shadow maybe we do need shadow can't decide if it's better with the shadow or not Maybe without the shadow.
kind of looks like he's walking. <laughs> this is so stupid. Anyway, I think that I thought that was kind of cool. So, if you're if you're not on Twitter, looking at Blender stuff, there's a lot of really cool things. Um, what is this? Oh, this is a... Uh, this is old school, right? I feel like I've, I've seen this before. Oh, man. I wish I knew how to do that stuff. Anyway. Okay. guys well this has been fun uh, I hope you enjoyed the stream today my brain is man I don't know yesterday was so much talking because we had the it was like three hours with Darren which was awesome and then after that was another uh, three hours blender class at night and now my voice is dead so anyway have a good rest of your day I hope you have fun playing around with stuff, and uh, yeah, see you next time.